So it's very easy to criticize a designer, make a review and say you would have done this, you would have done that, could have been better. But unless you can actually show that it works or that it's better or that it's improving or whatever, it's just noise. So I'm going to take a turn here and bring in a part to these episodes where I actually show you what I'm talking about and then you can see for yourself whether it helps, whether it doesn't. Welcome back guys. We're here for the second time, believe it or not. We just finished shooting this video after about a half an hour plus shooting. We realized we didn't have the volume on. So everything I said whoosh, out the door, we're going to say it again and we're going to go through it. So I've been warmed up, ready to go. I'm still as excited as ever because whenever you speak about a Ferrari, it's always a beautiful story and it's always incredibly exciting especially when they bring out a new car like the car we're going to speak about today let's get on to my analysis of this new ferrari 296 gtb now my first impression when i stand back and look at this car typically as a designer you'll stand off from a three-quarter front just to come face to face with it for the first time and get your first feel when i stand back and i look at this car my first impression is that they've done something pretty, pretty cool here. Obviously based on the 250 LM, which was launched in 1963 at the Paris Auto Show as a coupe version of the 250P. You can see the influence of that car in this car. And as I look at it right from the front, I see something that feels like a Ferrari. It's got those curves. It's got that sort of shark nose that we know from the, the Ferrari design language. And we can see a bit of the hint of a modernization of the teardrop headlights done in a very modern way. Ferraris are starting to push that very wide mouth design cue, which is a little bit too exaggerated for my taste. I can see why they've done it. They've included the brake vent on the corners. Perhaps that could have been done a little bit less aggressively, but Ferraris, let's face it, are aggressive and elegant combined, blended together. So there's a reason for it, I'm sure. Now let's look at it and analyze it from a front three quarter. And the first thing that really stands out for me is that blend of the windscreen coming around the A-pillar and blending into the side door glass. Now, typically you'll have a red or a body colored A-pillar. This has none, so you really get a jet fighter canopy feel, almost like it's completely wrapped in glass on the front, kind of like a visor look, which is very modern, very cool, I think. It brings the car up to date, makes it look very almost futuristic in a way. Great, great thing on the Ferrari. If we look at the headlights, I'm having a bit of an issue with them because all that modern tech, all that double function, so you have as well as the headlights and the direction indicator and the position lamp, they're also including an air intake for the brakes. Fabulous, good way to combine different functions into one design, one nice clean design, yet I think it's the white position lamp, or if that's an indicator, not sure. The alignment doesn't seem to be spot on. Must be for a reason, because when we design, we try to align pieces and parts to cut lines, but they've missed the cut line on the bonnet, on the hood, and you can see it that it's slightly off. For a guy with OCD, it sure, sure puts them on edge, and uh, I think that could have been done a little bit better, a little bit more resolved. Nice clean surfaces through the bonnet, through the hood area. If we look at it from the side view, you'll notice that that apex, the part where the top of the fender curves both ways, the peak is directly over the center line of the front wheel, which is an awesome piece of design, an awesome way to design the front fenders, such that when you're driving the car, you know exactly where your wheel is placed because that high point of the fender marks the center line of your wheel. So great for wheel placement when you're driving in corners, works very well as a visual reference. They've absolutely got it spot on. If we're looking at the car from the side view and we see that windscreen coming nicely around the A-pillar, dark A-pillar so that it looks like it's a wraparound piece of glass. 
and coming into the door, look at the belt line on the car, on the lower part of the glass of the door, where it starts to come back and then it starts to come up and then it hits another apex. It's like having a curve with two apexes in it. And then it just misses finishing out at the rear of the door and they have to continue it almost like it's run off the track. Very interesting how Ferrari has lost the shoulder on this design. Typically a Ferrari will have nice broad shoulders right at that point where the body surface comes up and meets the door glass line. Here they've scalloped it away. They've sculpted it away almost like a scoop taken out of the surface and that forms the hollow area of the air intake of the side air coming into the intake like on the 250 LM even like on a Ferrari Dino. Let's call it the Dino without the Ferrari. But at the same time, a very, very nice section to the door there. Very, very purposeful lines. Just what you see is what you get. Nothing fake, nothing unintentional or unintended. As we move back, you'll start to see some very interesting forms on there, especially coming off the top of the intake on the side. Suddenly it swells and Ferraris have done that masterfully always. They've managed to put a lot of that power, a lot of sexiness, a lot of that haunch development over the rear wheel. And this one really looks like it's been working out like a real bulging muscle on there, a real peak to the bicep kind of thing. Again, planted where that apex of the curve is directly over the rear wheel. That just balances the rear wheel. The rear part of the car looks great because it's balanced over the rear wheel. And then you come back and here's where we start to get something that is very unique in Ferrari's design language. If you're from Germany, feel free to call it the cam tail. If you're from Italy, we call it la coda tronca. And the coda tronca is that straight cut off the back of the car on the back side so you don't get a lot of curvature, a lot of roundness to the back of the car. Just stops and that's a very, very effective aerodynamic feature in terms of rear end design. Now, let's move back to the front a little bit because there's one thing that I cannot get over. It is the design of the rear view mirror. And the principle of rear view mirrors dictates that we need a certain size and for that reason they tend to be bulky. They used to be able to be smaller but these days they want them to be fairly large and health and safety all that kind of <laughs> but at any rate if we were able to run a camera much better much cleaner uh, much newer much more effective perhaps even the red body colored mirror cap against the black background stands out the black foot against the body surface of the car stands out. If you were just to reverse it and have the cap, the mirror cap in dark, say carbon fiber or, or, or black, just to blend into the glass, it would immediately visually disappear as well as if you did the foot of the mirror in body color, that would blend into the section of the body there. And the mirror visually from a distance would at, at least disappear visually. Again, now we move to the rear of the car, and this is where it gets really interesting because what I'm looking at here is an awesome way that Ferrari is able to bring in that feeling of the 250LM, and what they're doing is using what we call flying bridges, almost like flying buttresses, but this is what we would refer to as a flying bridge. Now, a flying bridge basically connects the two C-pillars in a certain nice curve, whereas a flying buttress basically just comes off the back. is almost one independent item and another independent item. Here, if you look at the car from a top view, you'll see a nice gentle connection between the two sides, between the C-pillar on the left and the C-pillar on the right. Beautifully sculpted credit to the sculptors who did that and obviously to the designers but in fact it looks absolutely stunning the other very very beautiful part here is this vertical windscreen on the back uh, very ferrari-esque very dino-esque a little bit less curvature but still vertical absolutely beautiful right behind the the passenger and the driver's heads there if we look at the car directly from rear view i would have an immensely difficult time to tell you that this is a ferrari I absolutely believe that Ferrari should keep round taillights in the back, whether it's a single one or a double one on each side, but round taillights on the back of a car scream Ferrari to me. And I think they've missed a little bit of a trick with that. The other issue I'm having on the back of this car is that exhaust pipe. Now, I do not understand why it has a peak on the top and on the bottom. I don't believe the exhaust pipe immediately where it comes out is separated. Perhaps inside it is, but at this point where those two peaks are, 
it's not connected. And so you almost have this exhaust pipe that wants to say it's in two, but it's not. So it's a little bit confusing. The other thing I think is the position of the exhaust pipe. Now, if we look at that area where it's placed, you have almost one black air extractor area on the left and one on the right. What I much would have preferred, I think would have added to the Ferrari-esqueness of this car is to push the exhaust pipe up, get rid of that little single tooth almost that's hanging down there and position it within that black hole, surround it with that black hole and make it look much more dominant, much more impressive. There is another element besides the tail lamps that really bugs me and that is the active rear spoiler that is that black piece between the tail lights. Nice piece of design. We love aero. We love active aerodynamics. Yet this piece here being in black resembles almost like a hole or a gap that doesn't need to be there. Effectively, if you stood behind the car and didn't know it, you would probably think that was a gap or at least a big open spot for no reason at all. And for me, I think that piece needs to be in body color. I would much prefer that piece to be much more subtle, much more clean on the rear end. Just put it in body color and I think it would work much, much better. Another thing on the Ferraris, which is always spectacular, it's always great to see what new concept, what new design Ferrari comes up to repeat the five spoke theme on their wheels, on their alloys. And they've done, again, a great job on these alloys. It must be one guy's singular job at Ferrari to sit there and design wheels for him because it's so beautiful, so masterfully executed, always new, always fresh, fantastic, great job. So it's very easy to criticize a designer, make a review and say you would have done this, you would have done that, could have been better. But unless you can actually show that it works or that it's better or that it's improving or whatever, it's just noise. So I'm going to take a turn here and bring in a part to these episodes where I actually show you what I'm talking about and what I mean. And we'll do a quick sketch, just rough it in basically, and then later turn it into a quick Photoshop make it look as realistic as possible and we'll compare it to the old version and then you can see for yourself whether it helps, whether it doesn't and what you think about it. So let's start. On the front of the car, as I said, the opening of the grill, the intake area is quite wide. I think the fact that you're bringing air into the air duct there is great. It has a purpose for it, obviously. It works very well. But again, it elongates the width of the mouth and it really gives it that almost exaggerated, cartoonish, wide, wide grin, wide, wide mouth. So what I would do is take that bar that we're talking about that begins the area for the brake intake and move it much further inwards. And then that way you could possibly even sculpt a little bit of that area in there to give you a much more defined air intake area. So that area for me is quite critical on this design. I think it could be improved in that sense there. The other problem I think is the area that I spoke about where we have the top of the header of the windscreen meeting the top of the door, the wrap around in this area and you have the split line. And I think this junction area here is very, very difficult for them to get right because you're trying to go in that direction as well as trying optimally, you want to almost blend that and have a curve there. But I think the very best solution or the easiest solution also to remedy that you're not going to change the geometry is simply to darken the roof make it look like it's a glass canopy. So that in that sense, what you're going to be doing is having all of this glass here going through, all of this glass here going through. You'll end up with something that looks straight out of a jet fighter canopy design school. So I think the wonderful solution that they could apply is to really darken that roof. The other thing I was mentioning is in the mirror area where we have the red or body colored cap on the top and we have the foot. What you want to try to do is make that foot disappear. So you would typically want to paint it, I would imagine, in the same color as the body. And the red mirror cap here, the color, the body color, you would probably want to do it in black such that it blends into the greenhouse. And from a ways off, you would have a very, very clean side profile to the car.
But again, the one issue I have on the side of the car is this here. You have the belt line coming through here. You have a curve starting here where your apex is basically there. Then you have another apex here and you've got your door shut line there and that, your intake there. Now this double apex missing here, creating a piece of panel here which has no function at all. It's not even see-through. I think the solution to there is probably to lift the belt line slightly and then bring it gently up into that line there such that your cut line of the rear door is where the black actually finishes and then you could do that. This at the moment looks kind of like a Lotus solution but I think a Ferrari could look much cleaner, much better if we blackened the roof area through there. We brought the belt line gently upwards, met the rear of the door shut line there. Now what would that look like from this view? Obviously you're going to bring this line up a little bit higher. You're going to meet the line where it is currently. You're going to bring that up and over. And so from here forward, we're going to go with a bit of a more darker roof panel. The rocker panel area through here, the sill panel, we want to bring that back in body color so that we can actually lower the car visually to the ground, make it a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more planted on the road. And on the rear, as I mentioned, I think we need to readdress this taillight design to bring it less of a square feel, which kind of is a little bit strange what's going on there. I don't understand that piece. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. And I don't understand that here. So what I would do is basically either put two lights here in the back, but I would think that something more of like the 250 LM would be a singular, nice, chunky, round rear lamp on the back could definitely become something fresh. Again, I would probably lift the area through here so that we have a much more straight line on the air extractor area there. I would lift the tailpipe, move it up a little bit higher, and clean it up in such a way that it doesn't have those little flicks and basically, I think those small changes there will definitely clean up the rear of the car. In conclusion, I think what this car shows, what the Ferrari 296 GTB shows, that it's a very valuable thing when a car brand has something in their history that they can play on, that has an extremely respectable history, is almost iconic, and when they can play off of that and bring it up to date, it's not a retro design, it's reminiscent of the past, it's almost an evolutionary approach. Very few companies have those kind of things in their arsenal, in their weapons. And this Ferrari 296 GTB definitely proves it. It's got two wheels in the past and it's got two wheels in the future, blends them both, combines the emotion of the past with the technology of the future and they've done it really well. All in all, I think the car works very well design-wise. It's not screaming futuristic design language, but it shouldn't. It's a Ferrari, Ferrari don't have to do that. And for those reasons, I have to give the Ferrari 296 GTB a rating of 8.9. Is this a step forward for Ferrari? Or are they just dragging their feet again and not bringing enough newness to the market? Always fun to read your comments. I love reading them. Again, make sure you subscribe. We're bringing new stuff all the time to the channel and the merchandising is coming soon so be sure you know when it's coming by clicking on the subscribe button we'll let you know first 
and see you again in the next episode.